Muhammad, peace be upon him, returned to live with his mother in Mecca when he was about three years old. Three years later Amina decided to take her son to visit his uncles in Yathrib. She told her maid, Baraga, to prepare everything they would need for the long journey, and then they joined one of the caravans going there. They stayed in Yathrib a month and Muhammad, peace be upon him, enjoyed the visit with his cousins. The climate there was very pleasant and you learned to swim and to fly a kite. On their way back to Mecca, however, Amina became ill and died. She was buried in the village at al Abu, not far from Yathrib. Muhammad, peace be upon him, returned sadly to Mecca with his mother's maid he was now six years old and had lost both his father and mother. He was then adopted by his grandfather, Abd al mutalib who loved him dearly and kept him by his side at all times. It was the custom of Abd al mutalib to sit on a blanket near the Kaaba. There he was always surrounded by people who had come to speak to him. No one was allowed to sit on the blanket with him, however, except his grandson Muhammad, peace be upon him, which shows how close they were to each other. Many times Abd al mutalib was heard to say, this boy will be very important one day. Two years later Abd al mutalib became ill and Muhammad, peace be upon him, stayed by him constantly. Abd al mutalib told his son, Abu Talib, to adopt Muhammad, peace be upon him, after his death, which he did. Abu Talib had many children of his own, but Muhammad, peace be upon him, immediately became part of his family and the favorite child. The time came for Quraysh to prepare a caravan to go to Syria. Abu Talib was going with them and he took Muhammad, peace be upon him, along. It was Muhammad's first journey to the north. After days of travel, the caravan arrived at a place near Syria where the Romans used to come to trade with the Arabs. Near this marketplace lived a monk called Bahira. His cell had been used by generations of monks before him and contained ancient manuscripts. Bahira saw the caravan in the distance and was amazed to see that over it was a large white cloud. It was the only cloud in a clear blue sky and it appeared to be shading one of the travelers. The monk was even more surprised to see that the cloud seemed to follow the caravan but disappeared when the person it was shading sat down under a tree. Bahira knew from the scriptures that a prophet was expected to come after Jesus and it had been his wish to see this prophet before he died. Realizing that what he had just seen was a miracle, he began to think that his wish might, after all, come true. The monk sent an invitation to the Meccans to come and eat with him. The Arabs were surprised because they often passed by and Bahira had never invited them before. When the group was all together for the meal, the monk said, Is this everyone? Question mark No. Someone said, a boy was left watching the camels. Bahira insisted that the boy should join them. The boy was Muhammad, peace be upon him. When he arrived Bahira Kama said nothing, but watched him all through the meal. He noticed many things about his appearance which fitted the description in the old manuscripts. Later on, he took him aside and asked Muhammad, peace be upon him, many questions. He soon found out how he felt about the idols in the Kaaba. When Bahira tried to make him swear by them, as the Arabs used to do, Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, There is nothing in this world that I hate more. They talked together about Allah and Muhammad's life and family. What was said made Bahira certain that this was indeed the prophet who would follow Jesus. Then the monk went to Abu Talib and asked him how he was related to Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abu Talib told him that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was his son. Bahira replied that this could not be so because the boy was destined to grow up an orphan, and he ordered Abu Talib to watch over Muhammad, peace be upon him, with great care. There are many stories told about Muhammad's youth. Some tell of how he used to take the family's sheep to graze and was always kind to them. While they grazed he would sit thinking about the mysteries of nature. Unlike those around him, he never worshipped the idols and never swore by them. He also wondered why people were always struggling for power and money, and this saddened him and made him feel lonely, but he kept his feelings to himself. He was a quiet, thoughtful boy, and rarely played with other boys of his age. On one occasion, however, Muhammad, peace be upon him, went with some of the boys to a wedding in Mecca. When he reached the house he heard the sounds of music and dancing but just as he was about to enter he suddenly felt tired and, sitting down, fell asleep. He didn't wake up until late the next morning and thus missed the celebrations. In this way Allah prevented him from doing anything foolish for he was keeping Muhammad, peace be upon him, for something much more important.